This is a demonstration of the Forest Manufacturing Model 204 Heavy Vertical Blade Traveling Table Bandsaw. This particular machine um, has our pneumatic blade tension, it's based on the Model 204. Um, we have added pneumatic blade tensioning, so it uses an air cylinder and an air pressure regulator to control blade tension instead of our usual um, screw over spring mechanism for the smaller saws. It allows us to include a blade breakage detector. The machine also has variable speed powered table drive system. So just what you expect, the table moves on its own, automatic stop at both ends, um, five horsepower blade drive motor with our basic controls. So this includes electronic control of the blade, tension detension, table functions. Um, it does include a blade breakage detector, as I said, and a low air pressure switch. So basically if you have any blade related fault, the machine will either stop cutting or won't start cutting in the first place. We have our precision workpiece positioning fence on this machine. So it's a pretty nicely optioned out saw. Um, I've illustrated all these features in other videos. What, I, what this machine gives us a great chance to show off is our ability to customize the machine dimensions to suit application. You may have noticed this is a big, long, skinny bandsaw. The customer for this machine has uh, some plastic constructs that are about I think they're like three foot by three foot, maybe two foot by two foot, you know, they're two foot by two foot and 12 foot long. And he wants to slit them lengthwise. So we built him a machine, as you see here, it has about 156 inches of table stroke, a little bit of over travel on the ends. And he can position the workpiece using the fence to make his cuts, very precise. The fence face is made from 3 8 inch aluminum plate. Um, it's kind of a pain to make it this big because I can't get a single piece of aluminum that long. So we had to bolt splice two pieces together, um, have a piece of angle, pardon me, aluminum channel on the back side bolted to. That's why you see all the bolt holes, but it makes for a very nice, stiff, very flat, accurate fence. Um, I've been over the basic controls before, but I've got two speed controls, one for the forward or cutting direction, one for the return direction. The idea being in the cutting direction, your operators are gonna find some speed for the table advance that works well for them, 20, 25%, whatever it is of table speed. On the return stroke, you're always gonna leave it 100%. So you can leave both the forward and return speeds at the appropriate settings, not to be changing back and forth all the time. Um, this machine does, of course, have appropriate guarding. So the upper blade guide and upper blade guard are mounted on what we call a guide post. Unlock it, screw it down to wherever it needs to be. Guard the unused portion of the blade, lock it in. And then, I don't have anything terribly interesting to cut today, but I do have this big chunk of high density mineral fiber sitting around, so I thought I would cut it. Um, I don't even know if you'll see me on the camera. Let's do this. Did I mention it's a really long saw? Still more, wow, big thing. I'll turn it back. Okay, so this one does not have the electronic digital readout, that's an option. They will get instead a, basically a tape on the table surface to show them where the fence is. On lighter, I don't really recommend this, but uh, people do it anyway, so I thought I'd show it. You can use the fence to shift the workpiece over. So I turn the, just what you expect, turn the handle, and the fence moves and the workpiece moves. You can use this for incremental cutting. For example, the electronic digital readout we use has an increment function, so wherever it is, you can zero it, and then move it, say, one inch or whatever number you need, and it'll show up. So you can get incremental cuts off the zero reference that way, or you can just zero it out to, from the distance from the blade to the fence surface. That's what this saw's owner will wind up doing. But I can shift it over a bit here. I'll just take a little nibble on this workpiece. Oh, there we go. Ah, something worth noting here. I'm gonna re-aim the camera again. This comes up. 
So, the upper blade guide and guard assembly has some thickness to it, extends inside the blade. So, I cannot get, when I'm up against the fence here, I can't get the blade guard any closer to about two inches to the fence. So if I'm gonna take a little bitty thin slice, I have to raise this guard up above the fence height. So if I know I'm gonna be making, well, it becomes a trade-off. Do you want a really tall fence or do you wanna cut really skinny little pieces with a fully supported blade? It's a trade-off you have to make, but this is a good illustration of it. So set this up for a cut. Like I said, I'll shift it over just enough to make a little nibble of a cut here. The blade I'm using today is a one inch wide, three tooth per inch blade. It's a great do-all blade. It'll cut this stuff like butter. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess. It's gonna make some dust. Another option would be a one inch wide scallop edge blade. That would cut this material with making pretty much no dust. But just for a quick demo cut like this, I just wanna illustrate the concept. So, Saw controls, saw start, saw stop, tension and detension functions. I've got indicator lights if I have a fault on either the blade drive motor or the table drive motor and a light for the blade fault. I've got separate directions, forward and reverse and stop. So hit forward and it goes forward, no surprise. Forward is what we call the direction to make a cut. Reverse is going back to the home position to prepare for the following cut. And then we have the different potentiometers here to set forward speed and return speed. So first I'm gonna position the workpiece to make the cut. I'm gonna go forward. This machine is currently set up with a maximum table speed of two inches per second. I've got it set with an acceleration profile. It takes about five seconds to hit um, full speed. I'm just gonna get up close to the, if we were smart, we would hook up dust collection. We'll just make some dust. Nah. Okay, so we'll, Start the blade motor. When I do a cut like this, I like to start with the forward speed at zero, hit forward, then increase the speed and watch the cut. Now first I'm gonna get it all the way up to the cut. And it should just blast through this stuff. And make a lot of dust, yes. Oh, it's not even hesitating. That's running at about one inch per second right there. Just that easy. I'll let it go to the end and auto stop. And that's what it does. So this is the model 204. Heavy version includes the rail mounted table. It gives us the flexibility to make the table either for a heavy work piece, a wide work piece, or a very long and skinny work piece. Pneumatic tensioning, basic controls, roller blade guides, five horsepower blade drive motor with a brake so that start the motor. When I hit stop, the blade stop pretty much now. There's a safety feature. And that's what the machine does. If you have any questions, please feel free to call or email us at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you.